Let's take a look at the central limit theorem, an extremely important idea in the world of statistics. The gist of it is that the sample mean will be approximately normally distributed for large sample sizes, regardless of the distribution from which we are sampling. So suppose we are sampling from a population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, and we're going to let x bar be a random variable representing the sample mean of n independently drawn observations from this distribution. Now we've previously learned a couple of ideas related to the sampling distribution of x bar. We learned that the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean, mu x bar, is equal to the mean of the population from which we are drawing our sample. We also learned that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar, sigma x bar, is equal to sigma over the square root of n. We also learned that if the population is normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of x bar is also normal. And this is important for us. But what if the population is not normal? And this is where the central limit theorem really helps us out. The distribution of the sample mean tends toward the normal distribution as the sample size increases, regardless of the distribution from which we are sampling. So even if we are sampling from a distribution that is not normal, the sampling distribution of x bar is going to tend towards the normal distribution as the sample size increases. Now let's look at a couple of illustrations of this. Here, we have an exponential distribution. So an exponential distribution, the PDF is fairly high over there and trails off to the right. Something that is distinctly not normal. Suppose we draw a random sample of size 2 from this distribution. We draw two independent values from this distribution and we calculate their mean. And then we did that again. We got a different two values and calculated their mean. If we did this repeatedly, we'd get a bunch of sample means. And if I carried this out a whole bunch of times and plotted it out in a histogram, it would look something like this. So I've done it a few million times here, and this histogram is our histogram of sample means. So this is approximately what we call the sampling distribution, the sampling distribution of x bar. And that is when the sample size is two. Now note, this histogram here isn't really all that normal. It's got some of the skewness from that original distribution still. I have superimposed a normal curve for a little perspective. And our distribution of our sample mean when our sample size is only 2 is not that close to normal. Now I'm going to amp up the sample size and see what happens. One thing to note here, I am letting the axes change. So the values on my y-axis and the values on my x-axis are going to change for these plots. Here we're just interested in the shape of the distribution. What the central limit the theorem tells us about the shape of the distribution of x bar. And here our sample size is 4. So I've done the same thing as before except amped up the sample size a little bit. And so this histogram is approximately my sampling distribution of x bar. And I've superimposed the appropriate normal curve. Well, this sampling distribution of x bar is selecting a little little closer to the normal, but it still retains some of that skewness of the original distribution. Now let's amp up the sample size a little bit more. Here's the distribution when n is 10. How about 20? How about 50? Well, when n is 50, our sampling distribution of x bar is awfully close to normal. There's still a little deviation here in the tails. They're not perfect. It's not perfectly normal. It's a little bit off, but it's awfully close. So when our sample size over here is 50, the sampling distribution of x bar is approximately normal. The distribution of the sample mean tends toward the normal distribution as the sample size increases. And as a very rough guideline, the sample mean can be considered approximately normally distributed if the sample size is at least 30. If your n is bigger than or equal to 30, say. That is an extremely rough guideline. We can construct mathematical situations in which a sample size of 100 trillion is nowhere near enough to guarantee this. But for most practical situations, when we start getting sample sizes of 30, 40, 200, 1,000, then we've got the scenario where our sample mean will be approximately normally distributed. Let's look at another scenario here. Here we've got a different distribution, bit of a funky little mixture distribution. What if I did the same thing as I did previously? And I take a sample of size 2 and calculate the sample mean and do that repeatedly. And so this histogram again is representing at least approximately the sampling distribution of x bar in this spot. And I've got a superimposed normal curve. And in this scenario, it doesn't look all that normal. When our sample size is 2, that's not enough to give us approximate normality. So let's amp up the sample size a bit. 
One thing to note here, in this set of pictures, I am fixing the x-axis values here, but I'm letting the y-axis values change. You'll see that, so just note the shape of the distribution. That's the most important thing for us at this point. So my sampling distribution in this scenario, when n is 4, well, wait a minute, we're actually getting something that's looking roughly normal. There's a little bit of deviation here and in this tail and that kind of thing, but it's looking approximately normal. How about when we amp up the sample size a little bit more? Now, when n is 10, we're getting something that's looking... Pretty darn close. How about 20? Closer still. How about 50? Closer still. So here when we get a sample size of 50 again, our sampling distribution of x bar is approximately normal. So regardless of the distribution from which we're drawing our sample, the distribution of x bar will be approximately normal if we have a large enough sample size. A little more formally here, we say that our standard z-score type of idea, our x bar minus mu over sigma over the root of n, this quantity has a distribution that tends to the standard normal distribution as the sample size goes off to infinity. Now, a couple of little technical restrictions. We need a finite mean and variance, but that is usually the case for the things that we're dealing with. Now, why is this important? The central limit theorem is going to tell us that many statistics have distributions that are approximately normal for large sample sizes, even when we are sampling from a distribution that is not normal. Well, what does that matter? It means we can often use well-developed statistical inference procedures that are based on a normal distribution, even if we are sampling from a population that is not normal, provided we have a large enough sample size. So we can use these well-developed statistical inference ideas and these well-developed probability type of calculations, even when we don't know what the underlying distribution is, if we have a large enough sample size. To illustrate how this might help us in a probability calculation, consider this scenario. Suppose salaries at a very large corporation have a mean of 62,000 and a standard deviation of 32,000. So the mean of my population is 62,000. And the standard deviation of my population is 32,000. And if I let X be the salary of this randomly selected employee, I want to know the probability that X is bigger than 66,000. It might be tempting to say, okay, well, wait, we used to do this, x minus mu over sigma. Then this is equal to the probability that z is bigger than 66,000 minus 62,000 over 32,000. And put that in, find out this is probability that z is bigger than 0 0.125. Now, we haven't really done anything wrong here. But if we look this up in a standard normal table, or if we throw this into a computer and find an area under the standard normal curve, that would be wrong. Because x does not have a normal distribution. Nowhere in this question does it say that these salaries are normally distributed. And in fact, in the real world, salaries have a real bit of right skewness to them, where we've got a lot of people in the middle, middle median type of area, and then some of the rich folks near the high end, uh, there's a few of those making a whole whack of money. So salaries tend to have this right skewness here. And so X is definitely not normally distributed, which means that this Z is definitely not normally distributed. So we simply cannot answer this question. This question cannot be answered with the given information. We need to know something about the actual distribution here before we can answer this probability question. So where does the central limit theorem come in? Well, suppose we change the question a little. Same premise with the salaries. But if 100 employees are randomly selected, what is the probability their average salary exceeds 66,000? We are talking about the average salary of 100 employees. So I want to know the probability that X bar is bigger than 66,000. And the central limit theorem tells me that this X bar minus mu over sigma over the root of N, this is going to tend toward the normal distribution as the sample size increases. So I can standardize this and I can say this is the probability that Z is bigger than 66,000 minus 62,000, the mean, over sigma of 32,000 over the square root of 100. And this is going to be the probability that z is greater than 1.25. And the central limit theorem tells me that x bar is going to be approximately normally distributed, which implies that this z is going to have approximately the standard normal distribution. And so we can look up this probability under our usual standard normal idea. And I can find the area to the right of 1.25 under my standard normal curve. I can find that area is 0.106 to three decimal places, and the central limit 
Pyramid Theorem has helped me out and told me that this probability is approximately 0.106. So even though we did not know the distribution and the distribution of the salaries was not normal, still the distribution of X bar is approximately normal and so we can use these well-developed probability calculations from the normal distribution to find an approximate answer. So the central limit theorem is very important. It allows us to do probability calculations like this. It allows us to carry out some important statistical inference procedures, even when we're sampling from non-normal populations. The world of statistics would be very, very different if not for the central limit theorem.